What's up guys? Today I have with us the new A-Racer RC Mini 5 and RC2. These are full standalone ECUs for your new fuel injected Honda CRF 110. I'm going to show you guys about more about the RC Mini 5. It's a little more user friendly for the average guy using these, uh, these CRF 110s. So we'll get into the RC2 a little bit later, but today just the Mini 5. I did bring it along because I want to show you guys some things that it has that the Mini 5 doesn't, uh, vice versa. But uh, let's see, tuning by smartphone. So of course your entire ECU is controlled from a smartphone app, your fuel, your ignition. You can view it all uh, in real time data. You can record that data as well and even send it to us. Maybe you're having a weird little hiccup or something strange. Go out, ride, record, email it over. We'll see if we can find a little bug in there for you. Um, yes, you can change your RPM limit on the fly, ignition timing, fuel adjustments, uh, plug and play of course. Uh, malfunction code so if you get a check engine light no more trying to look up hey what code is 7-2 or whatever you just pull it up and it'll tell you right on the spot so uh, a lot of other neat features has a uh, temp compensation so say you know as the bike's getting hot you want to start adding some more fuel or taking some fuel away you can make those adjustments on the fly so let's dive in with uh with installation and then we'll get to flashing these things installation on this rc mini 5 is as easy as it gets you're just going to pop off your stock seat, two bolts on each side, 10 millimeter, or no, I'm sorry, eight millimeter on these, and then disconnect the stock ECU. You'll just push this pin down here. You see it lifts up and then kind of two hands to one to hold the pin, one to pull the ECU out. So let's get this swapped over. Generally what we'll do is cut one of these tabs off uh, with a Dremel tool and then take some Velcro, run it across, Velcro the bottom of the ECU, and then keeps it in place just like so. So we got the A-Racer Mini 5 installed on the bike, and this is the Bluetooth dongle, so you do wanna make sure that's secured as well. We Velcroed it to the ECU. The ECU's Velcroed to the fender, so everything should stay in place. Um, any way that you can secure that, you know, zip ties or glue, whatever you wanna do, just keep that thing in place. Uh, definitely recommend it. We're kinda of hard on these things, so. Let's dive into the flashing process to get the base map on the, on the ECU, and we'll talk about the software a little bit. Moving over to your smartphone, let's get this connected to the ECU. Very simple walkthrough, you're gonna download the AirRacer Smart app. That is available for both Android and iOS. Uh, there is a light and a paid version. So let's dive into the paid version. It's gonna be your main menu. Uh, or, I'm sorry, this is your main menu. This is gonna be your main startup screen, so to speak. All of this data is gonna be live changes while the bike's running. I'll show that to you guys here in just a little bit. Um, you can change these things as well. Say you want to change TPS to engine temp, for example. You can change all five of these parameters. View all of these, and then there is um, kind of a description for each. So if you tap on one, it'll tell you exactly what it is. Your data logging button is right on the front. So say you want to go out and do a ride, save your data. You'll click that button to, button to start recording. And then when you're done, hit stop recording. It'll, it'll save that in the log view. From there, you can email it or view it as you'd like. But let's go ahead and connect the ECU. Turn the key on. Kill switch on. I'm gonna click B-Link under the settings. Read engine map and connected. So from here, the phone is connected to the ECU. Uh, you don't have to do that every time. Now that they're connected, I can shut the bike off, turn it back on, it's gonna auto connect, which is nice. Another thing I do recommend is this communication key setting. It's the second one from the top here. This will put a passcode on the ECU. So anybody who wants to get into the ECU, for example, will not be able to without that code. So next thing, we gotta flash in the file. Uh, this is gonna be your base file. So you'll go to Honda, CRF 110. Just make sure that's on CRF 110 and not say Beat 110 or Blade 125. Uh, if you flash the wrong file into this ECU, it is possible to brick it. Um, from there, you may have to send it to A-Racer. It becomes a bit of a headache. But the three base maps you're provided with are a bone stock bike, which you'd use this for anything that's running the stock throttle body and stock injector. So even if you're doing a big bore kit or, you know, say you're just doing a cam, just real basic mods, intake exhaust, things of that nature, I'd stick on map one. Map two is going to be all of your 24 and 26 th millimeter throttle body base maps, um, whether you're running intake exhaust or... A cam, ported head, 
you know, any of the combination that's closest to that setup, that's going to be the map file you'll choose. And then this third one's going to be for your bigger builds, the 132 cc kit, 24 or 26 millimeter throttle body that is designed to be run with the 130 cc injector, both with intake and exhaust. So we're going to be choosing this middle map. From there, you'll hit flash. That will flash into the ECU. This is important. You don't want this to disconnect in any way, whether your phone dies, you get a phone call, you hit abort. Um, that'll cause it to go into error mode, which again, you'll have to flash in the file and start from scratch. So I'll let this finish up and then we'll dive into the TPS learn and we're head over to calibration. That's the second tab on there. And at the very bottom is TPS learn. So what that's going to do is sync the TPS sensor to the ECU. Hit start learning. We'll go full throttle. And it's going to learn. And from here you're set. Now if your mods match the exact description as the base file, you're ready to go ride. It's as simple as that. I'm going to go ahead and break the phone software up into a few different sections. Let's go ahead and go into calibration, swipe from the left, hit the second tab, and let's split this up between fuel, spark, engine settings, and vehicle settings. A few of these we're not going to use, so I'll go over that in, well, as we come up to them. Fuel base. To start off, we do have a little description button at the bottom that will tell you exactly what it is. Um, it's description, exactly that. Adjust the basic fuel for all operation range. 100 is the base, 110% is increasing, 90 is 10% decreasing. So what that means is you have an overall fuel table that's kind of behind the scenes on the Mini 5. You can view it with an RC2. Um, that's what I've pulled up as the computer app for the RC2. So we go down to 90, it'd be the same thing as taking your entire fuel map, dropping 10% fuel, um, which would also be in the second setting here. This is gonna be how you adjust your fuel. You have your idle range, wide open throttle at the bottom, off throttle, and then everything kind of in between is where all your partial throttle is gonna be, of course. So this is all, all live changes, of course, as long as the bike's running. When you do that fuel base, say you add 10%, it'd be the same thing as taking this entire map, adding 10%. Um, generally with the fuel base, when you'll change this, say you're going to a big bore or a different injector, um, something that's kind of a drastic change on the bike. The stock injector on these is only 80 cc's a minute, which is actually pretty big for these bikes. Uh, if you're running the 110 cc injector, you're probably going to be running about 70, 75% fuel base. If you're running the 130cc injector, you're probably going to be in the 5560 range. Um, and that's only if you're on map one and two. If you're on the third map, again, that is designed for the 130cc injector. So on the flip side, say you go to the 110cc injector, you're going to need to go more fuel. Move over to target AFR. And this is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, this is the AFR that it was tuned for whenever the base map was built. These are all live changes as well, even without the auto-tune kit. So say you're idling at 13.8, you wanna drop it down to 13.0, it's gonna be a live change. Uh, say you add some race gas and you wanna add or subtract fuel across the whole map, uh, without adjusting the fuel tables itself, you could do that within the target AFR as well. Um, fuel acceleration, this is gonna be for throttle response. So when your throttle body opens, there's gonna be a rush of air and a little delay from when the injector catches up unless you have tip-in throttle adjustments. So what this does is it'll add X amount of fuel when you crack that throttle open. So say we have it at 150 or 150. That'd be a 50% additional fuel whenever you get the, uh, the throttle cracked. I always tell guys to play with this a bit. Some bikes like to be at 50, some 80, some 100, 120, 150. This is one of those settings that you can go out, burn a lap, um, change it complete opposite way, burn another lap and see what you like best. And then temp compensation will finish off all the fuel changes. So say when the bike is cold, uh, it's being a little cold nature, you can make it where it subtracts some fuel and actually kind of leans it out upon startup until it hits that 32 or 48 degrees and that's in Celsius right now. But same thing, whenever a bike gets hot, you can have it where it's adding fuel and kind of riching things up a bit. So a little bit of a fail safe built into these ECUs. So let's move over to the spark settings. Next up we have spark, 
which is exactly what it sounds like. That's going to be your ignition timing. Again, all of these are live on the fly changes. So uh, I usually recommend this with a dyno, but you know, butt dyno works sometimes. You say you want to add a couple degrees, um, you know, in the tip in areas. That's going to be open throttle, off throttle is your idle area, and then partial throttle all within the middle there. So. Next up, we got the backfire adjustment. So this is the feature uh, for shooting the flames out the exhaust. This is as simple as it gets to turn on. Hit the on button, set the RPM you want it to backfire at, set the sound level. Uh, ten, nine is not always the best. Sometimes it'll be a little bit louder, a little more flame at say seven or eight, but something to play with a little bit there. End of TPS, that's gonna be anything over that percent uh, will disengage it. So say you want to go 15% uh, throttle, anything anything under 15% will activate it, anything over 15% will not. So if you're actually riding with this on, it won't interrupt while you're riding around. And then end of speed, of course, is going to be when it shuts down as well. Go ahead and go into the rest of the settings here. Close throttle, that's going to be backfire upon chopping throttle so say maybe, maybe you're wide open through a through a straight you come into the corner you're going to get either some pops or that crackle um, again play with both those settings quite a bit you might find one direction or the other works best for your setup and then we have idle lope so if you want to change the lope pattern if you want to give it kind of a musical tone um, maybe have it lope really hard like it's got a cam in there you can play with that as well uh, sound level sound pattern frequency it's all right there Quick shifter, yes, we can add a quick shifter to this bike. Not that um, a whole lot of guys will do it, but A-Racer does offer a really nice quick shifter package for it. Moving next, we have idle RPM. This is gonna be a trim. Um, I could show you, but kind of drowns out my voice a little bit. It's gonna be for trimming your idle, say, um, you know, it's idling a little bit low. You've made all the adjustments on the air screw and the idle screw. It's still a little bit low. You can bump that up and help kind of get your idle to where you want it anyway. RPM limit, this is on the fly, so maybe you got a kid that's riding around on your big bore setup, you wanna drop him down to 7,000 RPM so he doesn't go and loop out, or you know maybe your full tilt setup's running 12, 13,000, that does go all the way up to 16,000. Uh, not that I'd recommend that. VVA control is not found on the, on the Hondas, that's with one of the Yamaha R3s. Decel fuel cut, this is gonna enable or enable or disable your fuel cut upon deceleration. So generally when this is turned off, you're gonna get a little bit smoother on off the throttle, a little bit less engine braking, where when it's on, it's gonna have just a little bit more of a snap for on off throttle, a little more engine braking. Uh, Auto tune, this is gonna be part of the AF1 kit, which I'm gonna dive into pretty deep a little bit later. And wideband O2 closed loop is also part of the auto tune side of things. Moving down, quick shifter, if you're running one, this is gonna be your quick shifter settings. Um, being the 110s, I'm not gonna to get too in depth on that. Speed gain, again, not gonna play with that as it does not uh, revolve around the 110s, nor does the coolant fan. So that goes over all the engine calibrations. We'll move into the rest of the settings here next. Power meter, I've honestly not played with this a whole lot. It's supposed to be kind of like a Oh, kind of like a mobile dyno, so, or not a mobile dyno, but like a uh, GPS dyno, so to speak. Um, we might do kind of a special video just for that by itself. Malfunction codes. Let's go ahead and just pop a sensor off this thing. Uh, that's the easiest one to get to. All right, TPS is disconnected. Go to malfunction codes. There you have a... P0122 and it says TPS open. So real easy to trouble code, no more having to guess how many lights are on there. You just open your app and there's your codes. Log view, so say you wanna check out a data log. Um, this can all be viewed within the computer as well. Um, if you wanna record your data, you can email it over by swiping. You'll hit share or you can delete it if needed. Um, maps, so maybe you want to have a couple custom maps where, um, say you run the stock exhaust for one race, you swap over to your aftermarket exhaust for another race, and you have certain settings dialed in. This is just going to be an example. We added 8% fuel through those areas. You go in and hit save, save it with your description, 
And then if you want to switch maps, just click that, load, and your new map is loading in. So this is perfect for anybody that does, kind of needs quick adjustments without having to go through every setting on the app. So it's only going to do the manual settings if you're running an auto-tune kit. It's not going to load the fuel map saved from the auto-tune kit. And then quick burns for flashing your base files. Settings, you do have uh, some unit settings change from metric to SAE. Language settings and function tips if you want it to pop up some tips for you. But that pretty much sums up the Mini 5. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, and we'll have some more videos coming soon.